Hey guys, it's Cor Ross and welcome to Six News. So today we're talking about a potential controversy that might explode and it's all about the Rainbow Six Siege board game and its exclusive Kickstarter rewards which are in-game cosmetic items that according to Mythic Games, the creator of the board game, will actually be sold by Ubisoft in the in-game store, making them of course not very exclusive at all. And this video was sponsored by R6 Tracker. This is an app you can get on Windows that gives you an overlay in-game. I love the Operators tab where I can actually see my top operators either by all of my seasons or the current season. But also you can use it to track your games while you're playing. So for instance, it says here that my team has a 49% chance of winning. And if you want to get R6 Tracker yourself, there's a link in the description below. So let's begin with a history lesson. The Rainbow Six board game by Mythic Games went up on a Kickstarter last year to a lot of fanfare, a very cool trailer they released as well alongside it. And they also had different tiers that would add expansion packs on with in-game items. And you also did get an actual physical version of that in-game item as well. I also did a video back then too going over it. I wasn't exactly convinced the in-game items would eventually make it into Siege, but obviously they did. And to be honest, I wish I backed this game so that I could have got the actual game and all the cool little figures you're going to get, along with the in-game items too. But not only that, Mythic Games gave the community the ability to vote on which in-game items would actually be developed. So for instance, we had Sledge as a Scottish blacksmith versus Jaeger as a cyber judge and Cyber Judge ended up winning and was indeed created in the game. Then we had Ace as Blake and Malusi as Melville, but uh, I honestly, I'm kind of amazed that Ace won this one. Look at that Malusi one, that would have been amazing. Then we had Nuke versus Mozzie. No surprise here that Nuke won. Also be noted that the actual physical item as well of the figurines is going to go to backers at a future time when the actual game ships. So it's not just that in-game item, you do get something physical too. Then we have Maverick versus Maestro. Maestro ended up winning this one, but kind of sad that Maverick one never made it in. Then we've got Dockaby versus Legion. And considering the Siege community, I'm kind of surprised that Dockaby didn't win this one. And Legion being made was incredible because this is probably the top skin out of all these board game ones. Although the Siege Tales one that recently came out on Amazon Prime kind of has some of those Dockaby assets in it. Then we had Hibana versus Cav, with Hibana winning this one. And then we had Ash versus Chanka, with Chanka winning it. And these skins were clearly labelled as Kickstarter exclusives. So it's obviously very surprising to see Mythic Games reply to one of their backers who'd only got up to the tier of one of the exclusive skins actually saying if you would like those other skins Ubisoft will make them available for purchase and that is from the creator of the board game so they obviously believe that Ubisoft is going to sell them they don't seem to have any confusion there however there was a follow-up post from a collaborator not the best thing to label someone on Kickstarter but uh, this is someone working directly with Mythic Games and they say Operators, unfortunately, there appears to have been a contractual misunderstanding between ourselves and Ubisoft regarding the exclusivity of the in-game video skins, and we have reached out to Ubisoft to reconcile the situation. We will keep you informed of developments. Now, what's interesting here is them saying that there's a contractual misunderstanding between themselves and Ubisoft. However, we just read that other post that was directly from Mythic Games and there didn't seem to be any misunderstanding there. They said that Ubisoft was going to sell them. So I think this is probably some damage control. They've maybe just realized this is an issue and they've gone, eh, Ubisoft, maybe, maybe not sell them in the store. And at the moment of making this video, there is no further updates with this last post being 10 days ago. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. I personally, even though I don't own the skins or have backed the Kickstarter, I hope they actually do stay exclusive to the Kickstarter because to me, that means if I see them in game, I'm going to be like, oh, that guy, you know, got them on the board game Kickstarter. That's kind of cool. I don't really need to see them. Also, the skins, although they're cool, it's not like they're 
absolutely incredible, amazing, and a must-have them type skins. Like their uniforms are mostly just reskins. It's not like they went into the concept art that was created with this very intricate uniforms and stuff. They're just reskin uniforms with customized heads. So again, it's not like they're incredible must-have uniforms. It's just the fact that they're a little bit rare. And I'm hoping that there's not some accounting at Ubisoft thinking, oh, let's sell these on the store because then they lose that rareness and suddenly they're not nearly as cool as they once were. All right, guys, Ross from the future here interrupting. I think this is the best part in the video to do this because we do have an update. I edited this video a couple of days ago and sent it off to my sponsor. They have been taking their times to get, get it authorized. And in that time, we have had an actual update that has confirmed what is going to happen with these skins. So let's go over it. And this is the new update on Kickstarter, which says we have been advised by our licensor, Ubisoft, that the in-game skins were not fully exclusive in the sense of what we meant it to Kickstarter backers, but time exclusive and will be eventually sold in Ubisoft's online store from March 2023. It was not communicated clearly at the time of the signing of the contract. Now, I want to take a step back here because I'm going to say this is bullshit. Because if you bring up that original comment about the availability of these skins, Mythic Games clearly says Ubisoft will sell them. It was only after this comment did Mythic Games start to backtrack and say that they were negotiating with Ubisoft. I believe they knew right from the start that these were going to be sold in the Ubisoft store, which doesn't make it look very good for Mythic Games. Now, there always could be some sort of communication issue here. Maybe this person who was replying originally did not understand and it was you know someone else who stepped in later or something like that. But it definitely is not a good thing to have happened to Mythic Games and is definitely going to suck. However, I can flip this right back around on Ubisoft to show that they are definitely not exactly blameless as well so let's have a look at this tweet which is from leroy who was the creative director for rainbow six siege when this kickstarter was going and he says for those who are wondering why those polls matter and he's talking about the polls earlier in which cosmetics were going to win in-game spots he says those are going to be the most insane rare skins ever made in r6 if you look at the backers it's only 6.4k even if it's double that by the end of the Kickstarter, it still max 13k people in the entire world who are going to own these skins. So, then he continues with two options. You'll be back in the Kickstarter now and become a happy few, obviously with your exclusive skins that are not going to be attainable any other way. Or two, in one year, you will be asking and crying for us to release those skins for everyone because they are too cool. Pick your side. Now, obviously, we didn't actually have to pick a side because Ubisoft behind closed doors made the decision and they are going to sell them. So my blame is firmly on Ubisoft and Mythic Games here because both of them, I would say, have lied to the actual customer of the Kickstarter. And that's coming from the highest up position in Ubisoft at the time, the director of Rainbow Six. Now, of course, that director's changed, but the agreement should not have changed. And on Mythic Games' side, they definitely just went straight in saying, oh yeah, Ubisoft's going to sell them in that original comment. So I definitely think both are to blame and they should make a U-turn on this decision. If I could talk to someone in the higher ups of Ubisoft, I would say Ubisoft, don't sell them because actually it's cooler that they're rarer. And although I know you're going to make a lot of money off them, it's still cooler that they're rare items. And, you know, I would, if Ubisoft, I'd backtrack on it, but um, I don't think they will. I think March 2023, we're going to see these get sold in about six months time. So if you have these skins, you've got six months to show them off and then potentially a whole bunch of people are going to have them and they'll no longer be rare or cool. Anyway, back to my original video, which includes a community post on what you would do in this situation. A uh, bit irrelevant now, but we'll still go over it and continue the original video. But what I will do once I post this video is I'll put up a poll on the community section of this channel and you guys can vote whether you think these skins should stay exclusive to the Kickstarter that ended last year or do you believe these should be on the store for everyone to buy at probably a very pricey cost. And as this is a developing story right now, as I make this video, we just don't know which way it's going to go. These could end up being the rarest skins in the game 
or that could flip overnight and end up becoming some of the easiest skins to get. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.